So we have a lower deck season four trader and I'm so excited. I mean, I knew that you would know I was excited anyway, but the fact that it seems to feature so much of Star Trek Voyager is a little bit amazing. So we open up with that shot of a star that sees the Cerritos flying in over it, which is very Star Trek Voyager opening, in my opinion. We get a voiceover that reminds me very much of the Wrath of Khan intro. This one says, at the edge of the universe. So it reminds me of like, you know, at the end of the universe, there's Khan, look at him, floofing up his hair. Which is exactly what the quote from the trailer is. The Cerritos is talking about attacks on various vessels. We then see close-ups of a bird of prey, an Orion ship, a Binar ship, and there's a bit of disagreement in Trek Culture Towers about whether this is a vertical warbird or a warbird seen at a different angle. I choose to believe it could be either, but also the way that it's framed has to be a tribute to designer Andy Probert's first warbird. Most importantly, we have a whole bunch of dead crews. The report says that so far it's been all non-Federation ships. We then see a shot of a Klingon spear floating through space with a Klingon symbol on a broken piece of debris. Then we get a Romulan symbol on a broken piece of debris. And what ship does Starfleet send to fix all this? It's surely the Cerritos. We see Mariner rolling up her sleeves. We see Boimler about to be less than pleased with his assignment. And in the background, most importantly, we see Towel Guy. Yes, Boimler has been assigned to holodeck waste removal, which is what a, a Mariner was assigned to, which is something she clearly loved. Finally, four seasons in, Tillin has been assigned to the Cerritos. Now, she's not quite a Starfleet member yet, because if you look closely, you'll see that she has that Star Trek Voyager non-commissioned officer insignia. This cuts to a shot of Kayshawn and Ransom on a rather recognizable bridge set but it's okay because we cut straight away to a very sweaty pyramid that is being built by a lot of the crew of the Cerritos and thankfully Tendi is there too. Tendi and Rutherford continue to be the perfect double act while Ransom in his niceness proceeds to threaten Boimler with a promotion. You know all he has to do is keep cleaning out the holodeck. Um, <clears throat> It takes a bit of a twist when it turns out there's going to be Ferengi celebrations. Is this going to be on Ferenginar? I don't really know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Spoiler, it totally is. One of the clues behind this is that we see a few Ferengi bellhops pushing Tendi and Rutherford together, and they seem to be trying to get more than just luggage into the room. We see a lot of shots of some aliens with some very long eyebrows, and I like to think that they are just much like myself before I've had a chance to trim in the morning. September 7th, a very important date because that is the date we will be watching new Star Trek Lower Decks. We see in some sort of menagerie, a little animal demon creature hops up on the back of another animal and sucks it completely dry of life. Now, this may be on Ferenginar, because if we look at the control panel beside it, we see what looks like Ferengi writing. Now, in a slightly later shot, we also see humans in uniforms that remind me slightly of like when the bow breaks and the Masterpiece Society, and every time the designer just sort of skipped a day. But yes, it's got Ferengi writing on the side of it. We see the return of Migli Moo, obviously we see the return of Freeman, we see the return of Tiana, and perhaps most importantly of all, we see Ransom and Shaxx doing corridor yoga. It was so dodgy in The Next Generation, but here it just looks right. It looks right. And if you look at it, the, the, the actual positioning of them, they've been flipped around. So Ransom is playing the Troy and Shax is playing the Crusher. There's obviously some sort of side quest going on to an Orion nightclub because Tillin and Tendi and Mariner are there. There's a knife thrown, Mariner gets one in her shoulder. It's all very terrible until they find the ship that resembles Seven of Nine's ship from Dark Frontier, the Raven. It is, according to my notes, an Eerie class ship. So A-E-E. 
or IE, an eerie class, however you want to pronounce that. Um, and it's very much the class from Dark Frontier as opposed to the class from The Raven because of a whole series of they weren't told to create an entire class of ships and they created the one that was going to appear in The Raven and then we did one later on for Dark Frontier. Everyone had a good time. Just after we get a shot of Mariner kicking Badgie, I presume we'll come back to that one, we get a fantastic shot from the mess hall of someone wearing a hat that says Romulan Ale, and then you just have the end of it, but I presume it's it's five o'clock somewhere. And listen, as an Irishman, that speaks to my heart. There's then a couple of shots of Boimler in who appears to be wearing Medusan eye gear, and the Mariner crashes the Yosemite 2 shuttle. And then we get what seems to be the return of two very popular characters from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Yes, it looks as though Gran Nagus Rom and Lita will be appearing in Lower Decks Season 4, which I have to say I'm so looking forward to. I never expected to see these two again, but also I suppose, you know, in fairness, we got Quark, we got Kira. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. This is going to make me smile. This is going to make me smile. We see some swinging Orion pirates. We see another shot of the, you know, the Raven or the Eerie class. We see some more Orions on board that ship. So that's pretty cool. And then we get more shots, which as far as I'm concerned, confirms that Voyager is a museum. Uh, what seems to be a Rigelian museum guide. And then you have Mariner and Boimler running around, checking things out. You see a mannequin of what is pr most probably, almost definitely, Tom Paris. It's got the Voyager uniform across it. They open the wrong bulkhead and up, oh, wouldn't you know it, there's another macrocosm virus flying around. Be grand. Where's Ellie Littlechild with a dagger? One of the funniest moments from the trailer is from something I, I couldn't possibly speak about. He, Mariner says to Boimler, gosh, it's almost like that Pike thing we can't talk about, but I don't know what that could be in relation to. So there's a few more videos on the way. We have the breakdown of the Discovery Season 5 promo clip of the Strange New Worlds Episode 9 themed episode clip, that's all I'll say. And of course we have the ups and downs for the episode of Strange New Worlds that as you're watching this has probably already dropped. For fear of spoilers, I will say no more right now, but I think you know what I'm talking about. And that's it for everything because, wait now, the final shot of the teaser shows Rutherford holding the gift box from TNG Haven, who was of course played by Armin Zimmerman, are we getting him back, opening the door and hearing the most badass, hardcore rock song of them all. Alan Moraine, count to four, Alan Moraine, then three. I've been told by my bosses if I sing any more than that, they will terminate my contract. Folks, thank you so much for watching along. This has been like so much fun. Like, how often do I get to wear this? This has been so much fun. This has been silly. This has been ridiculous. SDC 2023. Uh, we weren't expecting, I don't know what we were expecting, but we weren't expecting this. Um, it's been so much fun. We have, as I say, another video coming, which is going to break down the strange new worlds and the discovery announcements. This has been incredible. We have an ups and downs coming as well because an episode dropped early, an episode that I definitely hadn't seen already. And we will, of course, have our podcast, which will release on Tuesday of this week. So, folks, thank you so much. I'm going to I'm going to shut up. and I'm going to start making the next video. You're awesome. Live long and prosper. Thank you so much. I love you all. Please spare a bit of love for Chris, who I, I, I think at this point he's just forgone all of life.